Well, okay, so let's get into it. This is, because you may not know, you are my second interview. And what I'm trying to do is offer people maybe just some interesting content, some different perspective. And then, of course, at the end, I always like to call out a nonprofit or a charity of choice, just because I think what unites us is stronger than what divides us. So I like to end it with, with that kind of angle. But first, where I want to start it is how do we know each other and how long have we known each other? This is not uh, a hard question. <laughs> We know each other through mutual friends, long, long, long time ago, 25, 26 years, I guess, somewhere in there. Uh, and uh, yeah, we've had a long history together. Uh, we we'll do. Leave it there. <laughs> we, we'll just leave that, we'll leave it like that. Yeah, I'll just leave that flat right there. <laughs> it's now, all good. It's now, all good, it ends good, right? It's true. Um, okay, but when I met you, you, you were an actor, but what I want yeah. to talk to you mainly about today is your time as a football player, because you were one of the rare few who not only played in the NFL, but you started and you played for Tampa, you played for the Giants, um, and then I believe you were going to play for the Bears when you decided not to play football anymore. What was that like? Uh, uh, playing in the NFL was a was a um, a childhood dream of mine. It's something you know my both fathers did. They played a long time. I wanted to do it since I was knee high, or, or as long as I could remember. That's what I wanted to be. Uh, so it you know my whole childhood growing up was always geared to football. So. Uh, and, you know, I was kind of a slow developer, but once I growing up. So to get there, I, I really, you know, I had to work hard for going to a lot of other things, you know, parties, whatnot, and whatever, to make the sacrifices to get there. But, uh, you know, once I got there, it was an amazing experience. It was fantastic. It was everything that I thought it would be. Uh, uh, but then my whole life was I wanted to be – NFL football player but once I got there I was like I reached that goal and I knew that I wanted to do a bunch of other stuff and I think I've told you this before I mean the reason why I got out of football but uh yeah then I was you know like two years in I was like already kind of looking for an exit strategy I knew I wanted to be creative but I wasn't quite sure what if that answers well, the question let me ask you this what do you think was the funnest moment you ever had on the field? On a football field? Yeah. Uh, to be honest with you, what I loved about football was the violence. Really? I loved, I loved the violence. I loved hitting people. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's, what, that's what got me excited. Did it matter if that happened during a game or during practice? Was there an added thrill of having 75,000 people watching it? Or was it just that, like, heavy-duty, hard-hitting physical content? It was the heavy, hardy part of it. It was, the, it was contact. My favorite part was I played offensive line, uh, but you picking a person. the center, right? Yes, at college I played tackle, offensive tackle for four years. Uh, started 36 consecutive games. It was, it was. I loved college football. College football was, you you lived and breathed with your brothers. You know, literally. I mean, you you eat with them, you shower with them, you practice with them, you bleed with them, you play with them. You 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 loved each other. And. Uh, but my favorite part was like, I would hit somebody and I love to pick them up off their feet and pin them on their back, throw them on the ground and pin them on their back. Um, does to this dominate someone. to your brothers? Because um, you also have giant brothers as well. Did you play like that with them or is it just on the football field? No, just on the football field. My brothers are uh, uh, 12 and 14 years younger than me. So by the time that you could play with them that way, 
I was already out here in Los Angeles. So. <laughs> you know, one no. thing I remember you telling me about was your mom. So your mom had five kids. She was a single mother. And I remember you telling me that she, oh, six. six. Sorry, yeah. I forgot about you. Just kidding. Twins. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. Well, I know that two of the boys are twins. Um, but I remember you telling me, and I think about this all the time when I go to the grocery store and then everyone eats everything and I have to go back and I'm like, oh, and I have one child. I remember you telling me that your mom would grocery shop for a week and you and your brothers would eat it, all of it, as an after school snack, a ham, <laughs> loaves of bread. Loaves of bread. I drink a gallon of milk and sit by my, my chair at the dinner table because I'd go through a gallon of milk a meal. And I was this big around growing up. I could not put weight on. I was a bean pole. So uh, I was tall, skinny. I, I matured late. And so, I mean, I had to eat everything to, uh, to play my position. So, and I was still light. I mean, I, was, I started in the big eight my, my sophomore year. I lied to everyone. I started in the big, everyone's weighing 260, 265. I'm playing at 240. Wow. And I was 6'6". So I was, I was tall, lanky, but I was super athletic and super quick. And I love to hit. So I got away with it. <laughs> That's also something I remember that, and you told Pippa this. You told Pippa, you never throw a ball. You push a ball away from you. Right. That's a, right. That is a great piece of advice. And I have thrown things differently since I heard you tell her that. I never throw it. I push it. No, the opposite. You want to throw it and not push it. So when she was Wait, throwing what? it. No, no, you got it backwards. I didn't misunderstood you. A lot of girls like this, they, they take a ball and they, instead of, they, they throw from here, pushing. No, you take a ball and you bring it back here and you whip it. You throw it. You follow me? Yes, I feel misled. I have been well, doing it wrong for the last eight years thinking <laughs> I have really nailed something. And, and this is our relationship. In a nutshell, we can end the interview there. Total miscommunication. Jesus <laughs> Christ. No, I mean, that, think about it. I have half that gem of a mystery. Look at, the, you look, look at any athlete, and it's, it's fluid. They do it so fluidly. They bring it back, and it's the quick release. And you follow and the thumb comes over the top, football. Your sicky play, your sicky play. Is, the, is it the, your sicky work? I mean, I remember being worked to a level where they finally sent me home where I no longer recognized the sound man that I'd been working with for years and I introduced myself. And they said, she's done. Um, same with football. Do you, wor do you work when you have the flu? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, you play. I played I played with the flu. I played with broken bones sticking out. I played with a whole knuckle peeled open. I mean, the bone sticking out for a whole game. Third play of the game, I peeled this knuckle all the way back and the bone was sticking out, but they couldn't tape it because then it would be straight out and the bone, and then you'd break a finger. So I just had to play with it until the game was over and they could clean it out and stitch it up. Uh, Played with concussions. Don't remember playing in the games. <laughs> uh, you play. I mean, it's like, it, it, you know, today, obviously, we're a lot smarter. We know about CTE and, you know, the long-term effect of, of being hit in the head. You know, you play a game, you get hit in the head 65, 75 times. Practice is where you really get you hit in the head. Practice probably 300 times a day. But, um, yeah, you, you play. You have the flu, you play. If you yeah, could make an issue. adjustment, yeah, I don't, well, that brings us to one thing that I also remember about you is what you told me about being on that line and, and how bad. Oh, uh, how bad everyone smelled? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't really notice it until after the game when you sit down and you really, you sit down and you start taking inventory of how you feel, you know, it's like, all right, my neck still works, my shoulders, uh, 
and you look at your hands, your hands are bloody, but then you start taking the tape off and you're like, you know, like you put your hands to your, your nose and you're like, it's like almost vomit. It smells like, not to be disgusting, like you wipe the baby's butt or something without anything on your hand. That's how bad it smells. I'm gonna cut that out. I'm gonna have to edit that out, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know where you wanted to go with that. <laughs> the potty talk interview. Um, okay, what was, in professional football, what was, and I'm gonna ask you about another moment on the field, but what was your favorite moment on the field? What team were you playing for? And do, do you remember having a moment that was like, this is what I put all the hard work in for? Yeah, my senior year in college, uh, we, we were playing Oklahoma at home. We had a shot at the Big, uh, big Eight uh, uh, Championship. Uh, and I played against another All-American. It was like, we, he and I have been playing against each other for three years now. We were both projected to be number one draft choice, and it was a big buildup. ABC, not, back then, not all the games were televised all the time. So ABC was there, Keith Jackson, Al Michaels, interviews before the game. It was a big hype game, you know, 75,000 in the stands, cheerleaders screaming. And I ran out in the field, and I knew I was so ready for that moment. And it was just – and I had a great game. I got the game ball, we, and we beat Oklahoma 10-0. And, uh, yeah, that was, like, my favorite college moment, favorite pro moment my rookie year. We're playing the Rams out here well, down in Anaheim in the playoffs. Were you with the Giants and then? Who were you with? I, I, was with? I was with the New York Giants, and the Giants had been crap for the, like, past, I don't know, five, six years. And uh, we made it to the playoffs. So it was a big deal. You know, Phil Sims, Lawrence Taylor, Jim Bird, all these – Harry Carson. And I got in the game, and I remember playing against Jack Youngblood. Uh, I wasn't starting, but the guy in front of me got hurt, so I had to go in the fourth quarter. You know, it was a pivotal moment of the game. We had to get a first down to keep the defense off the field. And uh, I just remember, you know, black, blocking Jack Youngblood – Nervous as hell because I came in third down and I know he's coming off the ball so fast. I blocked him. Guy caught the ball. I ran down the field and I hit some guy over the top of the pile, putting the top of the pile off. And I was like, you know, I knew I could compete at that level is what is my point. And like, I can play with these guys. And so, yeah, those are like, there was other moments, but those, those are two things that stick out of my head from football the most. Tell me the moment that you decided you didn't want to play football anymore. Uh, it was my second year. We were playing the Rams again, uh, but this time they're in New York. And it was in the fourth quarter. We were driving down the field. And I, we were in a short yardage situation. I'm in the game. I'm blocking Jack Youngblood again. <laughs> I think it was young blood. I can't remember, but it, it was the same position. So, and uh, but it was a TV timeout. The TV timeouts, people don't know, is about a minute forty-five seconds, so they can run the commercials and everything. So you just kind of stand in the huddle. You know, most people think, well, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Well, it's usually not about football. Either you're catching your breath. So, you know, some guys are looking around or whatever. I'm looking. I was looking around, and I'm like seeing a fight in the upper deck, fight over there in the stands, fight over here, and I'm thinking, man, this is crazy. This is like. I know if I kill this guy, the fans are going to scream louder. And I go, this is like the Romans throwing the Christians to the lions. And I'm like, what are we doing this for? We're, we're, we're grown men, 24, 25, 26, not really, but we're grown men maiming each other to move this piece of pig skin up and down these white lines. Like, what does that mean? Why are we doing this? I mean, obviously for money, but I mean, what is the meaning of this? And I knew right then, I was like, I'm not a football player anymore. Hmm. You know, like, but I had, you know, I, I didn't, you know, if I was true to my heart, I probably would have retired after that season and figured out another thing. But I didn't have, I didn't have my escape plan yet. So I played, ended up playing uh, another couple of years and ended up with the Bears and the when I walked out. And then I, you know, when I went to Dick's office, I just said I couldn't do it anymore. And I left training camp before the season started and headed home. 
It's interesting. Violence kept you in and violence got you out. True, very true. It was almost to the point where it's like, I don't want to get hit in the head anymore. I felt like, I, I really felt like I've been hit in the head. I, you know, I've been playing with my head, head, leading with my head since high school, junior high. I felt like I needed to stop hitting my head. <laughs> would, you, would you encourage a child of yours to play football? I think the game has changed enough now that it's a lot safer. I mean, it's still a violent game, don't get me wrong. But they're definitely doing things or going in the right direction to make the game safer. Would I encourage him? No, absolutely not. I would point him in another direction. Mm. I'd give him like a TARS. Go play this. <laughs> Go play that. Uh, yeah. Uh, but if he wanted to do it, I would support him 100%. And I would teach him everything I know to make him the best he could be and protect himself. I have, a nephew, I have a nephew and a brother who's going to just went and made this decision. He's like a five-star quarterback. All state his junior year. But he's a, he's, he's a, he's a, he's a five-star recruit in football. He's a four-star recruit in basketball. He decided not to play his senior season of football until his scholarship to Illinois to play basketball. There you go. If someone is watching this interview and they're watching it thinking, my dream is to go to the NFL, what would you say is the best way to get that accomplished? Well, I mean, I think you, first of all, you need the genetics to have to play in the NFL. It's just not, you can't take a five, you know, a five, nine kid who wants to play offensive line. In Conrad, <laughs> Conrad, I feel like this, this is us again. Don't tell me I can't do this if this is my dream. Okay, well, then I'm, I'm just being realistic with you. I, <laughs> I have, I've had this conversation with so many of my friends' kids and stuff. I'm like, you have to be realistic. You have to be realistic about the situation. If you can't run, if you're a receiver and you can't run a 4 five forty, it isn't going to happen. You're just not you fast enough. you work on a 4 five forty. what can you work on to make it a better possibility? You hit the weight room three hours a day. You run every day. You do drills every day. You practice every day. So if you get the opportunity, you will succeed, hopefully. But there comes a certain point. I mean, like from high school to college to the NFL, your chances of making the NFL is like one in 1.5 million. Wow. Yeah. There's only been like 26,000 people ever to play in the NFL. What? In the history. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. All right, then let me set a more realistic goal. It's me. I, I you know. <laughs> you want to play for the Cowboys? <laughs> I may not play for the Cowboys at this point. Um, not going to shut myself off from the Senior Olympics, but I might not play for the Cowboys. Uh, I want to take off five pounds during, during this special time at home. What is the best way for me to do that? And similar question, I have five minutes to devote to exercise. That's all I got. It's all I got in me. It's all my family will let me have to myself. What do I do? Go, go in the kitchen, tell Alex to throw everything of sugar and bread out into the trash. Now you're just being mean. Now you're just being <laughs> <laughs> That'd be easiest. Uh, you know, Okay, this has been you know, great talking to you, Connor. Okay, so you the first thing diet. <laughs> you, know, to be honest, you, know, you know, diet is 90%. It doesn't matter how much hard work you do, diet is still 90%. But if you had five minutes to do something in this with, without it, you know, if you don't have a home gym in your house, I know yours is a studio. But so, you know, I always say the push up is the perfect exercise because it incorporates every muscle in your body. It engages your arms, your shoulders, your back, your chest, your core, your legs, everything. Uh, 
I've used, you know, I call it a prison workout. I, where I do, I do push-ups. I do, I try to do 50 push-ups and then I do 50 squats, 50 push-ups, 50 squats, you know, is until I, I can't do it anymore. Uh, I've done that, you know, when on location where there's no gyms or any place or not enough time to go find, to go to a gym. Uh, you know, I end up with, you know, with the part, you know, the parts I get where I'm the muscle, the, you know, the, the lunk head with the gun in the back. So, uh, I get the same part. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Callie. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, you know, I've always had to maintain a level of, uh, physicality, but seriously though, those two things alone will keep you in a decent shape. I mean, if you hit, do push-ups to exhaustion, you're working something. And if you do squats to exhaustion, I mean, that's getting your quads, your butt, your calves, your core. And you're doing, you know, and if you, and if you, I don't like to take breaks because then you build, you build your cardio, cardiovascular up as well. And so I just go until I'm, I can't. And so you could do it for five minutes nonstop. Your metabolism will be cranking for the next three hours. Which means... More sugar. You're burning fat. <laughs> no, no extra dessert. <laughs> um, your proudest moment in your adult life, did that come on the field or did it come from acting? It came from acting. Uh, because I think in my heart of hearts, I, I, I knew I've always, I always wanted, the only time I'm happy, put it this way, when, the only time I'm happy now, or the only thing gives me is I have to be creative, whether it's painting, drawing, writing music, screenplays, or acting. I have to be doing something creative to to fill my need. Uh, so I would say my proudest moment would be the making of my film that I wrote, Watercolor Postcards, which took 12 years to make. I mean, you know how hard it is to get a film made. You get, you know, someone is attached, they fall out, money falls out. It happened three different times until it finally got it right. And then uh, 12 years and it came out the way I wanted. It's been seen all over the world. But more importantly, I made it the way I wanted to make it. And I didn't let, I didn't let anyone compromise me. You know, people were fighting me. It's like, well, you better do this. Otherwise, you know, I'm like, no, no. This is the one time I get to make a movie the way I want to make it. So. Yeah, I, I said when it was done, I'm like, all right, you can kill me now. The bucket list is empty. <laughs> I can kill you now? Wait, yeah, you ready? Seriously? Are you ready to stop me? <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. I wonder if it counts as a felony if it's on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I always like to, well, first of all, Conrad, I said this before, I'll say it again. You're you're in my ride or die pack. I just think you are the bee's knees. You're just the best. Thank you. Um, you are super talented. You as well. Thank you. You as well. You are super talented in so many ways. You are such a giver. You are kind to all who know you. You are a gift. If you had to get behind a nonprofit or a charity, um, that you would suggest people look into or give to, and I know giving now is hard. I know it's almost impossible. But if you did, um, who, Lost would you, who would you get behind? Uh, I would get behind the first responders right now. I think I think what they're doing, the nurses, the doctors, the EMS people, the police out there in the middle of this pandemic, risking their lives. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're heroes right now. They're heroes. And they're, they're not only fighting the pandemic, I don't mean to get political, but they're fighting the, 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 the government <laughs> without yeah. the right you know, supplies. They don't even have the stuff they need to do their job. So, I mean, if anyone could give anything, I would give, I would, I would say go there, Let's get more masks, more tests, things that the doctors, nurses. Because you've seen it firsthand recently. You saw what it looked like. Yeah, I, uh, I was at the, I was waiting for uh, uh, Kat to get out of the uh, 
hospital uh, and I was there early you know, and I saw four ambulances come in within 35 minutes and I talked to a police officer standing in my car. I said, are those all COVID patients? And he said, yeah, 100%. He said, they're, and I mean, it, it was, it was scary. It was scary. I mean, they look like the walking dead strapped to a gurney, spasming, caught. I mean, you could tell they could hardly breathe. And that's why I think they were spasming. They were like struggling for a breath. I mean, it was. And, and Kat is also a, a first responder. She Kat's is. Her friend she is, is a first responder. She's a police officer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, she hasn't been on duty for the last couple of weeks because she needed a, a thing for her wrist so she could shoot again. Hopefully she won't have to, but she has to qualify again. So anyways, yeah. But she's going to be back out there uh, next week. Well, I'm, I'm with you, man. That is, that is sturdy work. That is sturdy Yeah, it is. Work. It is. So, so if anyone can help with that. Conrad, you're awesome. I hope I see you soon. I hope until I see you again, you stay well, stay creative, stay happy, stay you. And <laughs> I thank you for, um, for sharing your stories and your time. Oh, no, thank you for having me and you as well. Stay safe.